excited. I'm going to paint my Ruger SR556. Uh, so the first step is usually to degrease it. I'm going to use one of my favorite solutions to get grime off, Farland Break Free Powder Blast, and it's pretty much going to strip the surface of um, the metal, of like grease and other shit. I'm really looking here on the receiver, it's kind of dirty, uh, down underneath the rails and to kind of get that clean. So we'll start with that. I'm going to start with the rifle pointing down so that way everything runs, uh, runs down. This stuff dries pretty quick. I'll let this dry. Uh, you see it's already getting dry to the touch. It's, I'm really trying to get under here under the, uh, the rails. It will leave a little residue where it's eating other lube and stuff that you might have on there. Um, but it's dry to the touch. Next step is to get my uh, base coat and I'm going to be painting the entire thing. Also the sights and my uh, other mounted accessories are going to be separate. The other thing I need to do before I start doing the base coat is to apply painter's tape. Alright, I've got everything taped off. Uh, I've got the magwell blocked off. I've got the rubber butt pad on the stock blocked off. Everything else is going to get painted. As far as moving parts and things like that, um, it's, it, it's, I'm using a Rust-Oleum camouflage paint or whatever, uh, and it'll break off where it needs to. It's not like it's a glue or anything. Um, so I'll be painting the, uh, I've got a VTAC light mount. Um, I don't think I've even cleaned this, uh, but it's okay. And the two sights, I've got the, uh, I've got the front sight post blocked off, um, and I've covered both of the, uh, the, uh, ghost rings on the back sight. So, anyway, uh, my light, I've covered the, uh, button and the lens. So, we'll start with those to get warmed up. I'm using this light green as a base coat. Alright, I think that'll do it for uh, this side. I can let it dry for a little bit. I'll roll it over and start on the other side.
Alright guys, so this is going to be the first step to applying a pattern. I'm going to use some leaves that have just blown up on my porch. These leaves might want to move, so you got to get them kind of quick. Alright, from there, what we'll do is knock off the leaves. And all this is doing is giving you these shapes to work with. The idea is to break up the outline. So you have the really strong green points. I want to soften those up with a little bit of dusting. I'm going to let this dry for about 30 more minutes and then I'll move on to my next color. I'm going to use this laundry bag. You can use uh, netting or wire mesh to create your next part of your pattern. Alright, so I've laid my laundry bag over the rifle. I've covered as much as I can. I'll just shift it down to get that last bit of the stock. My next color that I'll be using is this kind of dark blue. So you may be thinking dark blue isn't really a color that you find in nature, but really it is actually very much found in nature. There's no true blacks or whites in nature. Shadows are generally uh, rendered as kind of a dark blue. Even camo on old BDUs, that way you think it's black is actually a really dark blue. So I'm going to use this and try and create some, some shadows on the rifle. And then while I'm here, I got a little bit of this light green left over. I might have to go out and get some more, but we're going to try and swing it with this. So again, this is just for creating little highlights. So the idea with the light green is when you look at leaves, you have the top part, which is a lighter green. In place of the blue, you might use a, a dark green. So you might use a dark green to, to replicate the shadows of underneath the leaves. Alright, let's see how it looks. Alright, not too bad. Let's do this last part of the stock. It will dry for another 30 minutes or so. And then we'll flip it over. Alright, that's one side. Pretty happy with it. Uh, so, just going to let it dry and then flip it over and be good to go.
All right, finally, we're going to do the highlights. Now we'll soften these highlights just a bit. And that'll do. So we're going to let it dry again. Going to mount the light back on. Let it dry overnight. And then remove the blue tape. Hit it with a very light green just to create some highlights. Kind of reminiscent of, you know, when the sunlight hits the tops of leaves, dark spots is kind of like the underneath of the shadows. Alright guys, thanks for watching. Hopefully this was helpful. You know, get creative with your patterns. Um, the idea is just to break up the silhouette. Look at the colors from your surroundings. Look at your season, your location. And incorporate those into your pattern.